What's up guys, we are back with another NECA Toys exclusive review, and this is for me anyway, the biggest of the four two packs that they've done for SDCC and NYCC for the DC Dark Horse stuff. So today we're taking a look at the Green Lantern versus Predator set. So you've got the same kind of box that we've seen for the other stuff in this uh, mini wave, mini line. So you've got just a black field with nothing else on the rest of the box. You've got the Green Lantern and the Predator emblems here, like kind of embossed on the front of the package. You do have a Velcro flap here that pops open showing nothing on the inside, which is still kind of different for NECA stuff. But then you've got this huge window that shows you, you know, you've got your Green Lantern, all his accessories, and you got this just amazing looking Predator and all of his accessories. So yeah, I'm incredibly excited to take a look at this. I have been dying to get my hands on this Predator for a very long time. So let's do it. Let's pull these guys out and take a look. And here they are out of the package, our Yellow Lantern Predator and our Green Lantern figure from NECA. Two figures that I have just been chomping at the bit to get a hold of. And having gotten the Predator out of the package to see exactly what they use to make this guy, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. And this might be my favorite set out of the bunch so far. And it's not because I'm a humongous Green Lantern fan. I really am. But it's because this figure is really, really damn good. And this entire set just comes with so much crazy stuff. So we're going to jump right in and take a look. We're going to start with Green Lantern. We're going to take a look at our DC figure first. And then we're going to get into the Predator. So here's our Green Lantern figure, our Hal Jordan figure, well, at least for now. And this guy is pretty familiar territory as far as this line, this subline of figures is going, because they all use the same bodies as far as these DC guys go. So if you've seen one, you know what's going to happen here. So the head can look up, he can look down pretty far. You've got nice bobble, you've got side to side rotation, arms go out. They rotate at the shoulder, you've got your bicep swivel, you've got double jointed elbows, you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. The ab crunch goes back a little bit, forward pretty good, and then of course you've got waist twist. Legs go all the way out, they kick forward about 90-ish degrees, they even kick backwards a little bit. You've got a thigh cut up there, you've got your double jointed knees, and then you've got a boot cut shin swivel, and then you've got rocker hinge and toe hinges at the feet. So, you know, this guy, again, like I said, is exactly what we've seen for Superman, Batman. They all use the same body, but it moves really well. And on this particular figure, I did have a little bit in the way of stuck joints, but nothing that needed heat and nothing that was even more than a minor nuisance to get moving. So he's been pretty solid so far, poses well, and just looks good standing still. And speaking of looking good, this might be my favorite DC figure of the bunch. I was pretty much in love with both Batman figures and the Superman figure. Superman really surprised me in how much I really liked that figure. But this one is, I mean, it's exactly what I wanted it to be. And that may be kind of an easy way to say that I just really like this thing, but it is exactly what I wanted it to be. I like this body for, for the DC figures. You know, the argument could be made that they don't need to share the same bodies and that they should not all be the same size, but it's an action figure line, so I'm not going to argue that point, really. I understand exactly why it had to happen this way. But I think the body really suits Hal Jordan, a Green Lantern, a human Green Lantern anyway, really well. And the paint job on this guy is just pretty stellar. So we've already seen this body before again. You know, it's the exact same thing. Great musculature, great sculpt all over this guy. He's got tons of paint shading all over his abs and on the chest and on the on the back. It's basically where the, the green paint is because you can't really do too much more shading when it comes to that black, but the light catches those muscles really well. You've got the incredibly stark white for the gloves. You've, of course, got the sculpted and painted ring on this particular hand, and then you've got the lantern logo on his chest, which is really crisp and clean and straight, and there's not a whole lot to really go on and on and on about with this guy because he's on a body that I already know is sculpted incredibly well after handling it multiple times across multiple figures. The colors are good. Everything pops. The sculpt is great. Shading really accentuates the body, and it's just a really cool looking figure. It's a clean, nicely sculpted, nicely presented Green Lantern. 
But just like the rest of the DC figures from NECA, I think it's all about the head sculpt, at least in terms of what really brings it home and sells it to me, because the body's great, the paint is good, the sculpt is good, but the heads on these things I think are just fantastic. They're sized great, the sculpt is fantastic, it's got that really harsh, kind of hard edge, angry look to it that you can, you know, really get a good comic vibe to. The Superman has a great classic look, the Batman has a great classic look, and this Hal Jordan has another great classic look. I love the gritting of the teeth. I love the mask. The eyes have that black around them to, to accentuate the white in the eyes. Hair is sculpted really well. And it's just a nice looking Hal Jordan head sculpt. I have I have zero complaints on this one. I think I think it might be my favorite. I don't know. They're all really awesome, and I'm just, you know, kind of over the moon with all of them. But this is a fantastic looking Hal Jordan figure. And this head sculpt is really the thing that tops it off. Well, no pun intended. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy is pretty well stocked, and I think this explains a lot of why the Batman Joker Alien pack doesn't have hardly any accessories. A lot of it went into this set for sure. So to start with, you've got your added head for the Jon Stewart, so you can swap out the Hal head and put the Jon Stewart head in here. And I think the sculpt on this is rock solid. I'm really happy with the way this guy looks. The uh, the paint applications are fantastic. Those green eyes, the facial hair that they've got on there, just the general look and feel of this head sculpt is is fantastic again you know i'm not so sure i'm really going to display them like this and i kind of regret not having a second one to have both but this is a really cool head sculpt if you prefer john to Hal. and then you've got a couple extra hands here so you've got an extra hand for the right side that has a hole in the hand to use energy effects with so you've got uh, just a closed fist right hand with a hole in the fingers and you can pop on this little sort of beginning uh, kind of projection energy blast here you've got another energy effect piece for a cross so you can pop that in take that out and then you've got the larger style uh, blast effect here to actually show the some sort of a projection energy beam out of his his hand here so just pop those out and put them in the hole then you've got a gripping left hand to hold an actual classic style lantern, which I think is a really awesome accessory. So it's kind of everything uh, that you could really expect to have. An extra head, you've got energy effects, you've got the lantern, and you've got extra hands. He is pretty well stacked, and, and there's, there's obviously room to grow in terms of accessories here, but at a base level, I think they nailed it, kind of giving you a little bit of everything with this particular figure. And here is our Yellow Lantern Predator. This this is definitely the most exciting of the non-DC stuff as far as these sets go. When I knew that this guy was coming, I was just 100% on board just to see what NECA would come up with. And this guy is pretty interesting because he is a huge amount of parts reuse. And I'll kind of give you a comparison here shortly of what most of this figure pulls from. It's not necessarily a bad thing, and I think they did a great job of using existing parts on this guy, but it's, it's kind of worth noting. So let's take a look and see what this guy can do. He is an ultimate style predator, so if you're familiar with those, and you're not going to be surprised here. So the head can look up a little bit, he can look down, you can rotate side to side. The arms do go out at the shoulders, but he does have a pad over on this side, so they will go out a little bit better on this side. It's not as big of a shoulder piece. The arms do rotate up there. You've got a bicep swivel. You've got double jointed elbows, but he does have a gauntlet, so it's going to get in the way a little bit. You can rotate at that gauntlet as well, rotate at the wrist, and then you've got hinges down there. You've got a diaphragm cut, so he can go backwards and forwards a little bit. Not much on the side to side, and then you can twist. And then he's got a ball peg at the waist to allow for a little bit more added movement backwards and forwards, a little bit side to side, and then you can rotate him around. It's mostly just different layers of twisting there. Legs go out pretty far. They kick forward all the way, really. Backwards, there's nothing to get in the way. They're going to go much further back than you probably need. You can rotate at the thigh. You've got double jointed knees. And then you've got nothing at the boot. There's no actual cut there. It's just a uh, sculpt work. And then you've got a ball peg down here at the ankles. So they go all the way backwards and forwards, side to side all over the place. So kind of a true rocker hinge, but not exactly. And then rotation down there. He does have a little bit more articulation, uh, depending on how you want to classify it, in the plasma caster, because this guy is articulated here. So you can move this guy all the way around, bobble it around side to side, and pose it uh, to be pointing at his foes. So this guy is, you know, for all intents and purposes, exactly what we're familiar with when it comes to predators. He moves exactly like I expected him to. No issues, no issues with stuck joints on this guy either. He was, uh, he was pretty mobile right out of the box. 
But my main interest for this figure, of course you likely know what I'm going to say, is all about the look. It's about the aesthetic. It's about just the general design and this type of character, a nice mashup of Predator and Yellow Lantern. And I think they did a lot of cool stuff here. Again, they did use a lot of pre-existing parts uh, and we'll, we'll do a comparison, but this guy works really well and they gave us some great translucent plastic that plays into the power set of a Predator and a Yellow Lantern. So there's just a lot of cool stuff going on here. So qu clearly you've got a lot of uh, more techno style of gear. So he's definitely a little bit more covered in some of the more cybernetic type of armor. So you've got this big chest piece here with the uh, all the cables and the wires running all over the back. You've got the big shoulder piece, the big gauntlets that run down. Of course, you've got your Yellow Lantern logo in the center. He's got this big monster belt with the cod piece. And you've got the, the, you know, kind of the thigh pads all over with a lot of dry brushing, a lot of uh, paint work in there. You've got the, the boots down here, which have the shin guards. And you've got a little net launcher here, but he actually doesn't have the hand for that. So that's kind of a weird one. Uh, but it, it, it actually works really well. It's glued in place so it doesn't actually pop off. And then you've got the spine piece that runs down his back to the humongous uh, <laughs> backside of the belt piece here, which has a lot more of that cybernetic techno type of look. But when it comes to the backside on this figure, I mean, it's obvious what the deal is here. It's all about the translucent plastic. So he's got, this guy has a sword for one, and it has translucent construct effects. So basically he is using his yellow lantern power to make his predator weaponry. So you've got the sheath on the back, and I've already got the sword in there. And then he's got a translucent yellow plasma caster backpack, which I think is just the coolest thing. I did not really think about this when they first explained what was coming uh, until we saw pictures it really made sense well yeah of course he would do that and it just looks cool I, I love translucent plastic to begin with and this is another one of those designs that's really techno really cyborg cybernetic type of look so it's different but of course it's still very familiar uh, territory when it comes to predators so I mean there's just not anything bad for me to say about this I'm a huge predator fan obviously I talk about predators a lot on the channel but this particular suit of armor that this one wears is a favorite of mine, not to mention the fact that the yellow works really well against that contrasting black, and then all of that dry brushing and wash to bring out all of the sculpt and all those nooks and crannies in there. It just works. There, There's nothing bad for me to say. It's a cool design that is further accentuated by the idea behind this mashup. And even more so, the head sculpt, the helmet sculpt on this one is really awesome. I'm a big fan of this one. I love the very almost like pewter look that it has, kind of not going against the very worn yellow on, on the mask there. I think it looks really fantastic. This is an interesting design. You've of course got the Predlocks coming out. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a cool looking design. You know, I could have almost seen them going a translucent route for this one to maybe put a faceplate over, over it instead of a full swappable head sculpt, but I'm happy with the way this turned out. I think it looks uh, pretty sweet, all, all things considered. I'm, I'm a big fan of this design. Paintwork is, of course, quite nice, and sculpt is, is, is exactly what you would expect to get from a NECA Predator. It's a, it's a pretty imposing but well-done piece. And then as far as accessories goes, this guy is just as stocked as the Green Lantern. So you pretty much have a complete set on both sides of the package here. Each one comes with a great deal of extra stuff. And of course, to start with, as is customary for most NECA Predators, you've got an unmasked head sculpt here. So this is kind of a standard Predator head. Nothing too crazy going on here. A lot of muted kind of olive tones almost. I like it. I think it looks fine. I generally don't use a lot of unmasked heads in, when it comes to my Predators, but this one still looks fantastic. I mean, as as is the norm, there is a lot of detail in there, a great deal of sculpt, a great deal of paintwork in there. So if you're a big fan of the unmasked head sculpts, you've got another cool one to add to your collection. And then you've got a bunch of other stuff. So of course, I've already swapped out a hand. He's got two gripping hands, so you can use uh, you can use those to add his weapons. This one, the right hand, or his left, sorry, the left hand has the ring on it, so you can see that uh, right there popping out. And then he's got some construct weaponry. So of course, you've already seen the sword, and and here that is. This is the exact same sword as the Battle Armor Lost Predator that I showed you. And then he's got a couple of other accessories that are, again, they're more parts reuse, but that's perfectly fine. Predators all tend to use a lot of the same stuff. So you've got one of the throwing discs here. So you've got one of these, the, the blades, the throwing blades. You can see he's got one on his belt, and this is the one that he can unfurl and uh, use as a construct, so more translucent plastic. And then he's also got one of the big Predator spears here 
in a, again, in delicious candy yellow translucent plastic. So he has a lot of stuff. You've got a lot of options here. And no matter how you do it, you're going to cover this guy in translucent yellow goodness. And that's that's really all I needed. They gave us a lot of cool construct type of things when it comes to this set. And I could not be happier. Just throw translucent plastic at me and you're pretty much guaranteed to get my business. And then, like I said, here is our quick comparison. So this is the figure where the majority of this guy's parts come from. So he doesn't exactly share the same overall build because this is an older Predator that doesn't have the more ultimate style articulation. But this is the same thing. So this is the Battle Armor Lost Predator, and he uses pretty much all of the armor pieces off of this guy. So you've got the same belt, the same, uh, the same thigh armor, you've got the same knee pads, you've got the same gauntlets, same shoulder pads, the same chest armor. The only difference here is that he's got the, the yellow lantern up there. This guy has the sword, obviously, and it's the same plasma caster. So there is a lot of reuse going on here, and that's not a negative. It's just one of those... Hey, look, that's kind of cool. I think they did a great job of translating this armor from an already awesome Predator into this. I mean, if you don't know that it's this, it might not even be possible to really recognize it. At first, it didn't cross my mind that this was even reuse until I took a much deeper look into it and then realized that I had some, some key things that kind of stood out. Obviously, the sword and the plasma caster were the big giveaways, but I think they did a great job of utilizing some already existing tooling and making a really cool, unique suit of Predator armor that, well, for all intents and purposes, isn't exactly all that unique in the toy line. So overall, this is this is absolutely a winning set. There's really no way for me to say it otherwise. This is probably my favorite one out of the bunch because I like Green Lantern. It's a solid figure, and he comes with a great deal of accessories. And I love Predator stuff. And this is easily one of the best Predators that has come out this year. There is no doubt about it. I think that NECA did a fantastic job with this set in particular, with the figures, with their sculpt work, with their paint work and especially when it comes to their accessories. But the Predator is one of the standout figures in this entire series of sets for me. I just think they did a great deal of extra work to make that figure seem so much cooler than the other Dark Horse stuff that they provided. Either way, if you're a Green Lantern fan, or if you're a Predator fan, or if you're a fan of both, you're in for a tremendous set of figures here. They really did not spare any expense when it comes to kind of cramming this particular set full of all kinds of cool stuff with two already awesome figures. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys New York Comic Con 2019 exclusive Green Lantern versus Yellow Lantern Predator set. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.